All right, well, let's look at the coaches, all right? So we talked about the players, and we talked about the team and that kind of stuff. Um, I think that there's also a lot to talk here about the coaches. Obviously, both are kind of attacking this from different ways, right? Ryan is Ryan Day is looking at possibly his third loss in a row to, uh, to, to Michigan, and whether that's cheating, whatever it is, to Ohio State fans, that's not acceptable. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, to them. They still think, hey, you need to win. You need to make this happen, especially this year when there's an interim coach coaching and not the actual head coach. Uh, and then also for Michigan, you know, it's not, it's less about the game for Jim Harbaugh and more about what's going to happen in the future. You know, there's a lot of rumblings about a possible show cause and stuff like that. I've only heard that from one person, so I'm not even sure how credible that is. Uh, but it does seem to be you know, at at least possible in that direction. So there's a lot going on on both sides here and possibilities of different things happening. Um, Eric, why don't we start with you? Just speak toward Ryan Day's job security and what kind of impact this game will have on that. Ryan Day's going nowhere, regardless of what happens Saturday. Um, Athletic director Gene Smith is retiring in the month of June. There is absolutely zero chance he fires, he fires Ryan day on his way out. Okay. So there will be a lot of pressure on the new athletic director, whoever that might become. If you have a coach who's zero and three, uh, in the last three years or one and three overall and zero and three in the last three years to get it done, but he's not the only one that would be on the hot seat. JR Jim Knowles was brought in to fix this defense. And last year in the two biggest games at the end of the year, that defense looked awful. And so if, if we go into Saturday and Corum just runs the ball down our throat again, and JJ looks like a Heisman trophy winning quarterback, you best believe that there's going to be a lot of pressure on Jim Knowles. on going, Hey, you went, you were awesome for 11 games. You get to the, the last game and you, you pooped yourself. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's a lot of pressure on these, on these coaches at Ohio state. Yeah, no, I think so. I think you make a good point about Jim Knowles too, because even if Ohio state does have a top five defense, it's like, you know, what have you done for me lately? What have you done in the biggest games of the season? And, um, Ohio state fans not known for their forgiveness, uh, mm-hmm. I would say. So, uh, mm-hmm. Derek, so obviously, like I said, it's not really about the game so much about kind of like the scandal and things like that. And I can't imagine that Michigan would fire. Jim Harbaugh. Um, but how, how are the, how are you and kind of the fan base feeling about the possibility of Jim Harbaugh's future with Michigan? I, I think, I think we just got to wait and see what keeps happening. Um, to me, I, I think, and I, I know the two of you are Ohio state fans, so you, so you might not look at it from the same perspective, but if you try and read between the lines here, um, that there are people with vested interests in Jim Harbaugh, not coaching college football. Um, and those people run conferences in college football. Those people run the NCAA, those people run TV networks, uh, that air games. Um, and I think you can say Jim Harbaugh brought it on himself because he has been very pro athletes, uh, all the way through. Um, he was a proponent of NIL long before, uh, other people were proponents of NIL. He was a proponent of the transfer portal long before people were proponents of the transfer portal. And then this year, he came out and gave almost an entire press conference uh, one week about how the NCAA is a basically a dying organization. And it's about time that uh, if coaches, conferences, um, the NCAA and TV networks are going to be pulling billions of dollars off of these kids playing, it's time that they share some of the revenue with them. Um, so I think that at Michigan, um, it, it depends how how much the uh, how much the university fights for him. Uh, because every time that these contract uh, the contract extension talk heats up, guess what? At the end, uh, something unprecedented happens again uh, towards Jim Harbaugh. Whether it's from the Big Ten, whether it's from the NCAA expediting their investigation. Which, by the way, I don't have a problem with the NCAA speeding up an investigation. They're notoriously slow in how they go about doing everything. So do whatever you need to do, but I don't foresee unprecedented things stopping uh, when it comes to Jim Harbaugh, unless he backs off his stance. And if you guys know anything about Jim Harbaugh, he is as hard headed as they come. He will not back down from something that, that he believes in. So um, I would love Jim Harbaugh to coach at Michigan 
forever. Jim Harbaugh is my my favorite football coach. Uh, that and that is at any level. I'm a diehard San Francisco 49ers fan for uh, my NFL team. So I saw him come in and instantly take a team that was a perennial three to six win team and instantly take it to the NFC championship game for three straight years. Um, so I've seen what he can do as a football coach. Now I know he's quirky. Um, the media dislikes him. Uh, he rubs a lot of people the, lo- the wrong way, except for the people that are inside of his organization. Um, he elevates and, and lifts up his coaching staff. He elevates and lifts up his players. Um, he deflects and deflects and deflects any criticism from hitting those guys and he will absorb it all. So I hope for me, and I think a lot of the Michigan base, I think there's a lot of people at the university that want to extend him, that want him to be there. I I think we got to wait and see what, what, what comes of all of these investigations that are, that are going on. And I, I personally don't feel like the NCAA is going to back off. Um, And I I think it's going to get pretty messy. Uh, I think it's going to turn into a pissing match uh, where a bunch of stuff gets aired out that happens in college football that everyone just says, Hey, don't ask, don't tell. Like we, we know the NCAA has a lot of rules that are really stupid and really vague and really difficult to follow and just do your own thing. I, I think that if the NCAA keeps going after Arbod, there's a chance that stuff could get aired out that is just really sloppy and makes the NCAA look bad, but that's not going to change the fact that they're probably going to keep going after them. So it's hard to say. Yeah. I talked about the revenue sharing from the beginning. Um, th- that comment, when I first heard it from Harbaugh, I thought to myself, uh, I agree with him. I do think that the players need to have some revenue sharing. I'm glad that a coach decided to speak up about it. Um, I wish it was a coach I liked more, but, <laughs> uh, but I, but I do respect him for bringing that up. Cause I do think it was something that needed to be brought up. Um, however, like, I, when I look at Jim Harbaugh and his job situation, I see it far more likely that, and I'm not saying this is the likely thing to happen, just the more likely thing uh, in the scenario of if he does leave, it's far less likely that Michigan moves on from him. And it's far more likely that Jim Harbaugh says, the NCAA is coming after me. You know, I'm missing half of my season because they're coming after me for A, B, and C, D. Uh, he feels like it's unfair, those kind of things. And he says, you know what, I can go back to the NFL or, or you know, I can... I, I, and kind of do my own thing, have less of these politics around me. Um, and so I feel like it's less likely that, you know, Jim Harbaugh, the, the Michigan does anything to him and more right. likely I, that he just says, let's move on from here because yeah. this is getting ridiculous. I, I, I agree. Um, I agree that that would be the, I, I don't think Michigan would part with Harbaugh. I think he, if anything, he would say to hell with this. I want to coach football. Yeah. And um, so, like I said, just wait it out. This thing is far from done. I feel like there's going to be a lot more to come. So wait, wait until we have facts. Do you want to bring up one more point for you, Eric? Cause uh, Detman brought it up. He said, Ryan day loses. He's 56 and seven. If he loses, you cannot find anyone to replicate that. Um, how big? Sure. sure how- I can. <laughs> His name's Urban Meyer. <laughs> he did better really, than that. Would they really go back to Urban Meyer, Eric? No. Yeah. Well, I, they they would if Ryan Day were to leave before the bowl game. I oh, think he well, would. Get, I think he. I think he would get asked to come back and coach for the bowl game, and I think he would do it. You think they would ask him before Tress? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, tr- yeah, yeah. Tress is Tress is yeah. He that that ship sailed. Yeah, yeah definitely. It, it would be Urban, and I think I think Urban would do it. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I think looking at this off season, if there is a possibility of both Michigan and Ohio state, both having open coaching positions, like we thought this season was crazy with all the scandal stuff going on in Ohio state, Michigan fighting, that would be even crazier to have the off season part of it, looking at it and saying, Ohio state is hiring. Michigan is hiring. They're both going at it. Who are they going to hire? Um, and that whole situation. So, 